Okay, good morning. good morning. Good morning, major family and friends. And welcome to our worship for May 9th, 2021. I want to wish a very special Mother's Day to everyone here. Whether you are a mother, we've all had a mother too. So on Mother's Day, we think lovingly of all those who have been our mother or grandmother or those who have been like a mother to us. And we have Carol's mother here today, all the way from York, PA. Mary Kay, welcome to our, our um, service here. So thrilled to see you. I met you back um, December 23rd, 2019. I came in before I was coming in to uh, speak and uh, have my trial sermon. It sounds so serious. And uh, Mary Kay was folding bulletins with her daughter. So it's wonderful to see you again. And we have April and her family are here. Dennis and Peggy Crim's daughter and her family. Uh, and we're so glad that you're here. Thank you for coming. It's Ted and Megan, right? Okay, because Caitlin's at college. And uh, everyone here, my dear, dear family, friends, and members, we're so thrilled to have you here. So let us move forward. We have Richard. Penny is our worship leader. So you have some announcements for us, Richard? All right. And uh, before he begins, I do want to let you know we are this Saturday having a service for Howard Franz, a memorial service at 11 a.m. I do encourage you to come and support that memorial. He did pass last fall, but it's important that we honor his life with his beloved wife, Sally. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, it's another special day for Mary and I. It's her anniversary. And after 62 years with, with me, I think Mary's up for sainthood. <laughs> I, <have a> <laughs> I have a few announcements. Uh, reminder to buy grocery cards from Carl and to pick up the main issue of the journal and her daily bread at the table. And all the women, please, as you leave the church today, pick up your carnation in the, at the rear of the church. And any members of the counting team willing to stay counting again, if so, please notify Carol in the office. And there will be a memorial service for Howard France this Saturday at 11 a.m. And the Women's Guild Holy Card Sale Cards are $5 for a seven inch hoagie. You can pick up any time at Carl's Corner. And you see Joanne Horvath or Sylvia Greger for the tickets. Uh, that's all the announcements I have, thank you.
join in for the invocation. Loving creative God, we praise and bless you for your mighty acts of creation. As we gather here this day, we hear your message of power and love through the witness of Jesus Christ as he prepared his disciples for his departure. He gave to them the words of encouragement about living in your life, and through that love, being witnesses to the whole world of your peace and hope. Be with us this day, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word. Amen. Sometimes you are hesitant to deliver this message to others. 
We don't quite believe that we are capable of actually living our whole lives in your love. So we act in ways that are sometimes hurtful to others and to ourselves. It is not always easy to witness to your transforming love. Stop us in our tracks, O oh Lord. Turn us around. Help us to face our weaknesses and your forgiving grace. Heal us of our sins and place us again on the path of peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear ones, God gives us the promise of abundant grace. God has remembered God's steadfast love of all the people. We are healed and forgiven. We are called again to be God's beloved children and witnesses. Receive that healing love and share the good news with all whom you need that God is love and in God there is no darkness or fear. Amen. The scripture for today comes from the book of Acts in the 10th chapter. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. The scripture lesson for today comes from the book of John, the 15th chapter. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's command and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do not do what I command, I no longer call you servants. But servants do not know that's master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my Father that I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Oh, the deep, deep. 
who loves us ever loves us changes never never more he who died to save his loved ones in the seat for them Remain in Jesus' love. Remain in the Father's love. Stay. Stay. I know it's not what we read about and learned about today, but I, it always makes me think about the story of Martha and Mary. When Jesus says to remain in my love. What a beautiful story. There wasn't any agony, there wasn't any trauma or pain. It was just a moment where Jesus had gone to see his dear friends, possibly his cousins, Martha and Mary. 
Martha was busy in the kitchen making food and making things for people to eat. And Mary sat at Jesus' feet. You remember this story? And at a certain point, Martha notices that Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet, not helping. And Martha's out there moving around, doing all these things, and she's working very hard. And she says, Jesus, tell her to help me. I need help out here. And one of the interesting stories of Jesus that we're not always sure exactly what he meant, because he certainly wasn't disregarding Martha's efforts, but he was saying, Martha, let her go. She chose the better part. Mary was remaining in Jesus' love, staying in his presence. Of course, if we would go to a family or friend's home and they invited us for dinner or lunch, and when we got there, they would just remain in our love and not have created or cooked any food, we would be disappointed. However, in this moment, Jesus is just saying, let it go. Understand. Remain in my love. And perhaps Mary put the pot down and sat with them a while. And then could also remain in Jesus' love. We're called to follow Jesus, to love one another as he has loved us. And we're asked to remain in his love. And that's the piece that sometimes we forget. You see, because if we don't return and sit at his feet after the cooking, after the action, after the giving, we become exhausted. We become drained because we forget to come back and rest and remain in God's love. Been at the major here almost a year and a half. And I know that you love one another as Jesus loves you. You do your ultimate best to do it. But do you take the time to remain in Jesus' love that you can rest and refill? Jesus asked us to love one another as he loved us and also to love your neighbor as yourself. This week, I was going along my life, doing various things, and doing ministry, doing being a mom, and doing all the things that you know a person does. And I have to get new glasses. These glasses are probably six years old at least. I've been wearing them because the glasses that I bought a few years ago, they just don't fit my face. They just don't work well. They, they're too heavy. And so I went on a search to find new glasses. And I looked and I looked and I just couldn't find a frame that fit me. What does this have to do with today's gospel? How do we see life? How, what is the frame in which we look to others? Without the perspective that we were taught by our parents, by our church, Perhaps we wouldn't understand how much God loves us. We're taught to see life through the frame of, yes, Jesus loves me. God loves me. There are other ways to life. I brought my old glasses. <laughs> and uh, so many different perspectives. Now I can put these on. Now these are blue and kind of hip and cool, but they don't quite fit me perfectly, they just, they bother me. But I can still see you. And I can see better with these. These lenses are clear for me, but somehow aren't quite working for me. And then we have the kind which we all know are the sunglasses. These are really difficult. <laughs> so when I didn't have these and I went and got myself some. And you see these little bit rosy colored dampens down some of the light. And when I need a rest from the world and say, I can't look at it all, I, can't, I need to put these on. 
If I'm at a memorial and I don't want everyone to see my emotion, I, I shade myself, I shade my view. How do we, how do we frame our vision? Are, are we seeing in the way we want? Are, are we using the frames that God calls us? Are we seeing one another the way God asks us to? Or are we seeing one another through a shade? Are we seeing one another through an old prescription? <laughs> is, is the newer glass hard on us? We can't quite get comfortable. Sometimes God calls us to change. He calls us to change our thoughts, our vision, our perspective. It's not easy. It's not always easy to see the other for who they truly are. But remember, they're seeing you through their frame as well. When I worked at Kids Peace, when I would first meet children, they would be distant toward me. They didn't know me yet. They didn't have the proper vision of me yet. But as time went, they knew they could trust me. That when they would see me coming, Miss Mary! We're called to see others, not just for how they look or for the behaviors they exhibit or the feelings they have or even the words they speak. We're called to see others through the lens and the frame of God's perspective. Of who God sees them to be. Beyond, there's a song, Beyond My Wants, Beyond My Fears. To life beyond death. When you imagine in your mind your mother. Do you see her back in time? Your mind can see. We have a lens. We have a vision. Your children now, your families now, a few of us, like Carol, your mother is here. We have mothers, younger mothers here. Whenever I prepare a memorial service, like I was working on this week with Sally, she brought me pictures of Howard. Someone saw him through a lens and took his picture and created a frame as a child, as a young man, middle age and older. The same eyes in every picture, the same soul in every picture, and the same smile. Yes, we look older, but we are young. We are ageless. Our souls are eternal with God. He sees us this way. He understands our challenges, our difficulties, our loss, but God still sees us with the frame that has the best prescription. Might sometimes be a little uncomfortable because he'll say, oh, now look what you're doing. That's not what I wanted. But your activities don't change the way he sees you, what he wants for you. An unending, incredible, fierce love that God has for us. We are asked to love others with that fierceness, the other, and it's very difficult at times. I've said many, many times, being a Christian is not an easy call. Sometimes people think, well, it's a crutch. You lean on God. No, that's not the whole story. He leans on us, too. He calls us to be his hands, his feet, his words, his eyes, his love. It's a big task. There are people that discuss Mother's Day as though 
Well, it can be a hard day for people, so let's not talk about it too much. I disagree with that idea. Not that it isn't difficult. Look, I worked at Kids Peace for 20 years. Lots of children that sadly didn't have the mother that they hoped for. That's a painful thing. Some people here may have had a painful childhood. A mother that passed when they were young. Some may have wished they could have been mothers and it didn't work out. Some may have already lost their child. So today can be difficult. But regardless of what ways it hasn't been exactly the dream? God's dream of motherhood always stands. He always sees it the same way. Sorry, keep doing glasses, but God always sees motherhood as a gift, as a joy, as a treasure, as a creation, as a shared experience. We all have a mother. It isn't just, are we a mother? We all birth life, men too. You birth ideas, and music, and hope, and guidance, and protection, and, and Father God, that parent to protect, that mother who would do anything, lay down her life for her child. Being a human is such a gift, with all its trials, with all its challenges. And we do it together. How do we get through it? Hand in hand. We are not made to be alone. In the beginning, God created man and he created woman because he saw it was not good for the man to be alone. Love one another. Travel the journey of life together. Remain in God's love. Invite people into God's love. Today we have beautiful flowers here in memory of Bob Berger, Robert, Carol Klinger's father, Mary Kay's husband, Buddy's father-in-law. Remembering him, the father. Yes? Up here are the roses to symbolize mother. These are from Archbishop Julius. He had them had his service yesterday, and he and his friend Darren called to say, please take the roses. Father, mother, relationship. God, Father, we are the children. Jesus, our way shower, our brother, our savior, family, familia. We are one in the family of God. Remain in that family. Frame your life knowing that wherever you are, no matter what happens, no matter how difficult life may be, that you are always seen through the frame of love, the perspective of love, and promise to see others in the same, the way a mother loves, the way a father loves, the way Jesus Father and Holy Spirit love us in totality beyond the actions that may disappoint. There is always love, and in this love, remain. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to be here to remain in your love, in God's love that sustains us all. Amen, my friends. Amen. Amen.
Now, where's Tim? Tim? I think we talked about, would you be able to bring up the offering for me today, please? Thanks, Tim. Heavenly Father, thank you for helping us to remain in your love. Teach us to rest at your feet. Teach us to understand that sometimes being with you will be enough. And bringing that love forward to others is what you call to love one another as you have loved us. Please accept these gifts from our hearts, our minds, and our work, and our life. And give us the understanding that we are needed, that we are important, and that whatever we have and whatever we give to you will be blessed many times over to help others and to bring joy to our souls. Amen in Jesus' name. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So before we bring forth our requests and our prayers, let us give thanksgiving first. And so we say, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings in all the years, the days, the moments, the hours, the visions, and the love that we have experienced, the forgiveness we have experienced in your love and staying in your love, we pray with great celebration. Amen. 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 And now, my dear ones, let us place our hands on our heart. And first, I want you to think about your mother. Call up a special moment. Her voice, her face, her love. A moment of special meaning. If it is beautiful, thank her. If it is sad, try to forgive her. Thank her for your love, her love for you, for her attempts, for she was human and may have made mistakes. And for those who have children, let us call them to mind, men or women. And we thank you as a father or as a mother today. We've learned about the Father's love and its Mother's Day. So fathers, let's think of our fathers. If we are fathers and mothers, let it bring forward those memories, and for those of you who have people that you have mentored, you have been like a father or mother, think of them, call them to mind. And also those who have mentored you, your teachers, aunts and uncles, grandparents, friends, the neighbor down the street who always took time for you. So many people go into shaping our lives. We are called then to turn and do the same. We say a prayer of thanksgiving for all the good. And we pray a prayer of hope and peace for all those who need it that we think of now. And for ourselves in those relationships in the ways that may not have been what we had hoped. Or if there's any pain of any kind, we pray to release it. We are all creators with God. And we acknowledge that creation, the creation of love. And now, my friends, whoever might be on your heart, who are you concerned for? Who are you hurting about? Who are you worried about? Who do you carry? Who is it? Perhaps it's more than one. 
Ask the Lord to bring his love so that that person can remain in God's love and know the power of that love, of sitting at the feet of Jesus. Let your loved one, if it can't be you, find someone that they can sit at their feet and know love. If they are resistant to you, let God bring a divine intervention for them. And we pray today in a special way for Robert Berger, for the beautiful flowers that we remember Robert, fabulous father, husband, uncle, friend, father-in-law, grandfather. Robert and I never met, but I know from knowing Carol, I know him. A special, special powerhouse and wonderful man who made a huge difference in so many lives, especially his families, but his community as well. We remember him with great love. We pray also for Julius, Archbishop Julius, as he moves through some health issues. We pray that he might be healed. We pray for the Metropolitan Community Church here who have lost three members in the last several months due to various illnesses. We lift them up. We pray for those in our church who have moved on to God through the last year. We lift them up as well. And for anyone whom you love, those who are not members but are our family, but she comes to mind out of your daughter, Donna. It's been a challenging year, but still here we are. And the beauty of the roses and the beauty of light and love remains, even in the midst of hardship. And so we ask the Lord to help us to remember that we do remain in his love, even in the difficulty. And if there's anything for you that you need, you are asked to love your neighbor as yourself, and so only you know what to ask for you, to release you, to free you. And we ask for special blessing upon those of you who are still recovering from any type of illness, those who are watching from their homes, and those here today. We celebrate Peggy being here today. It's been a while, Peggy. We're thrilled that you're here and feeling better. And for many of you who've been through health conditions that I may know about, but others do not, we lift you all, everyone, in prayer. And that's a very long prayer, but it was an important prayer today. Let's lift this up. Lord, I know you hear us. We are humans. We are doing the best. But you, we can. But you made us in your image and likeness. And so we call to you, Lord, be with us as we reach out to love as you taught us. Help us to give all we have and yet to keep a little bit, to keep ourselves going, and to remain in your love always. In Jesus' name we pray and we claim forth these healings and happenings and hopeful moments on this beautiful Mother's Day, day of Jesus' command to love one another. Amen. Amen. And now, my dear ones, we are to say the Lord's Prayer. Such a beautiful prayer. You see, today is really all interwoven about parenthood and creation. <clears throat> Jesus knew he would have to leave his friends. He asked them to remain in my love, but he would leave. If I were to leave in the middle of our service today and go out the door and say, remain in my love, <laughs> be a little bit unsettling. If, if you want us to remain in your love, why must you leave? But the idea is that the physical person might leave. Jesus physically would leave, but he would remain, he would stay. And so he gave us this beautiful prayer to say through the ages, through every generation. How many millions of times has this prayer been offered? And so let us join and reverberate with the sound of the generations the sound of the cosmos, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive others. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And yes, you can see that I sometimes say the prayer a little differently. I grew up saying trespasses, so Dennis and I always have a little thing about it. And now today I didn't say either, but <laughs> the whole idea is that we're forgiven. We're forgiven our debts, we're forgiven our trespasses. Amen? Amen. It is truly a gift to stand in front of you and be here. Richard, thank you for helping us this morning. It's wonderful to have you. Happy anniversary! 62 years. How fabulous. And we're so thrilled to see everyone. I wanted to read this to you as part of your commission. My trust in God flows out of the experience of his loving me, day in and day out. Whether the day is stormy or fair, whether I'm sick or in good health, whether I'm in a state of grace or disgrace, he comes to me where I love, where I live, and loves me as I am. He comes to me where I live, and loves me where I am. He came to see Martha and Mary, and he comes to see us, wherever we are. We don't have to get the house ready. We don't have to make anything. We have to open the door. We have to open our hearts. Let him visit you today. In the shape of whoever comes to the door. And let you, in your life today and always, bring God wherever you go. Bring God. Bring that love and acceptance. It doesn't mean you accept all the behaviors of everyone. I'm talking about bring the love. My daughter's coming to see me later. She's bringing a casserole. <laughs> what are we bringing when we come to someone's door? When we step in front of someone? Bring that great, great love. Allow yourself to receive it and to give it. Jesus is waiting for you. And now your blessing. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. And the presence of God watches over you. And so, wherever you are, God is. And where God is, my dear ones, all is well. Amen. Amen. You are beautiful, and Jesus loves you, and so do I. Be a blessing, be at peace, happy Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. Amen.